Now, in the instruction booklet for the Ultimate Pro, you will find the instructions on how to do a standard size wedge box. What I wanted to show you how to do in this project is how to adapt that to work with your boxer board and do custom different sizes. So what I'm doing is I've taken the Ultimate and I'm going to pop the boxer board into the top here and I'm going to work on the inches side, but it's the same principle if you want to work in metric or imperial sizes. Now, I've taken a sheet of coordinations, 12 by 12 sheet and I've cut it in half. So I've now got a sheet of 12 by 6 inch cardstock. Now the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to use the, the double-ended tool. Now this is the side where you've got a very fine edge and a larger head as well. So I'm going to go with the, the finer one, which is what I call the medium size head for the different ball heads you've got included. <clears throat> I'm going to position the 6 inch side up against the handle for measuring. Come along and score this in half, which will be 6 inches. Okay, so it's the first thing we do is for the, the width-wise we score exactly in half. Then for the other sides, what we do, instead of scoring in half, you find what will be the halfway point, which in this case is three inches, and just make a little marking, turn it right around, do the same again, find the halfway point with a little marking. And then take your boxer board off, and just to keep the workspace tidy, I'll put it back inside the Ultimate. Then using the flat lines on the top of the Ultimate, I'm just going to line up where we made our mark with the halfway point. I'm going to emboss that line. And then the same here from the halfway point to the embossed line. And on the final two sides. So it's, it's the same principle as what you've got in the instruction book for the wedge box. But instead of taking standard size measurements, we're just measuring the halfway points. Then all I'm going to do is fold and burnish all of the creases, so that's when we use the side of the tool to give a nice strong edge on here. And then we're ready to decorate our box. So you'll see the box is going to come together like this. Okay. Now for the front of the box, I've cut a triangle ready. And you can see I've actually popped this through one of the embossing folders I've got, which got some champagne glasses on. So this could be for celebration. Now, because this is on coordinations, now when I take this the sandpaper to the top of it, you can actually release the design. And then I'm going to do the same. I'm going to distress around the edges. Just like this. And because we've got a lot of dust everywhere, you can use your dust buddy to come in and I actually like to cut the dust buddies down so that I'm just working on part of it and it can either be used to clean up like this but also see how it really made that design pop. I'm going to stick this flat so I'm going to use the, um, the Collal all-purpose glue I'm going to stick this flat onto the front of my box. And the reason I like to double layer these is it just gives the box a little bit more strength and stability. And then I've actually cut some side panels which are also going to fit on the two sides. So same again, just positioning this down. Now the reason I use the uh, the all-purpose glue is because if I don't get this into place the first time I'm able to manoeuvre it but then also if a little bit squirts out the side I've got time to go and catch it and put it right. Okay now to pull this together I need to use a hole punch. I've just got a single hole punch here. I'm just going to make sure this usually you would obviously wait and give this time to dry just for the purposes of the demonstration, I'm going to come in, put my hole on the first side, right round, and again a hole on the second side. And when I'm doing these types of boxes, I always like to have two coordinating pieces of ribbon. So I've taken a, a thin blue one, 
and then a yellow satin one as well. Just going to trim the edges so they both match. And we're just going into one side and I find it's easier to use my small porky tool to help with this. Into one side and then we're coming back out the other. So I'll just come through one side and then the final side. Get those two sides about even. Tie my knot. Now if you're putting anything inside the box, obviously now is the time to do that. There's the two edges. Just going to cut those to match. And then you can see is how we do a little wedge box which can be adapted from the instructions in the manual to suit any size wedge box that you want to make. Mm -hmm.